So now that we've gone through and looked at the skeleton itself, we've seen what makes up a bone, we've seen what the bones are and where they're found in the body, now we can go into the classification of what they're gonna be known as and how we're gonna break them down. So long bones, first one here, longer than they are wide with heads at each end. Femur, humerus, simple examples of long bones, okay? Short bones are often cube-shaped and contain higher amounts of spongy bone. So these are gonna be the bones of the wrist and the ankle, the carpals and the tarsals. Next we have flat bones, are thinner, flattened and often curved, made of thin layers of compact and spongy bone. Example include the skull, ribs and sternum. Okay, uh, sesamoid bones are embedded within a tendon all right, and we see the patella, the, the kneecap would be that. And irregular bones don't fit in any other ca uh, categories. Example, vertebrae, sacrum, pelvic bones. They don't really fit in any of those others. So articulations are also called joints and exist wherever two bones meet. Joints are classified according to the range of motion that they allow. So we're going to classify your joints based on how the movement occurs between them. So fibrous joints contain dense fibrous tissue and are immovable. So the cranial bones come together in joints that are fibrous. They're not going to move. Next, we have cartilaginous joints, which are connected entirely with fibrocartilage or hyaline cartilage. Limited movement. Example includes uh, between the pubis, uh, in the pelvic girdle, and between the vertebrae. Okay, so we see these cartilaginous joints just have cartilage between them. Now, we see a synovial joint have space called the synovial cavity filled with fluid that separates the bone, allowing free movement, knee, shoulder, things like that. Okay, so we see right here in the knee, we see the uh, tibia, fibula, and femur. We see the patella tendon. Uh, we see cartilage, we see the ligaments, the ACL is going to be the one in the front, uh, and so that ACL ligament bone to bone. So you have the ACL, the MCL, the PCL, and the LCL, all ligaments connecting bone together. Okay? Tendons connect bone to muscle. So synovial joint structure, the ends of bones in synovial joints are covered with articular cartilage made of hyaline cartilage tissue. The joint is surrounded by a fibrous joint capsule, the inner surface of which is lined by a synovial membrane. And synovial fluid fills the space between the articular cartilage and the synovial membrane. So what can happen is when fluid is drained from the knee is taken from the sac formed by the synovial membrane. So this is Meta World Peace, not his given name. His given name is Ron Artest. He was a basketball player after he got into an altercation with some fans, when he started to change his life, he became Meta World Peace. But you can see right there, he's got the needle with all the fluid drained from his knee. So we see right here, here's an image of the knee. We see the synovial fluid. Uh, we see the membrane. We see the compact bone, the hyaline cartilage, and the fibrous capsule all coming together. All right, so ligaments join bone together and contain dense connective tissue, ACL, we can see the ACL pointed to in the front, the PCL in the back, all right, we see, uh, we do not see, they don't have the medial uh, MCL and the lateral, the LCL uh, labeled in this, but you can see them, uh, depending on which side of the leg it is here, um, based on the fact that I can't see the fibula, you can't tell which one's the medial and which one's the lateral. Um, but one thing that you should see here, you have also the meniscus, which is going to help to uh, protect the knee from coming together. All right. Complex joints also contain meniscus, shock absorbing fibrocartilage pads. So this one right here, we see this one actually has the LCL and the MCL, and you can see the fibula on the outside there. Okay. So common to hear MCL and LCL tears, those tend to heal themselves on their own, whereas an ACL tear is going to be much worse. Now, one thing you need to understand, we'll go over this later on, is all damaged ligaments are sprains. So technically, you hear, if you heard somebody sprain their knee or somebody tore their ACL, 
they're talking about the same thing, but obviously you're going to have a much different thought about it. Okay, so there's the ACL in the middle, and then the PCL in the back, and then the meniscus protecting. Now here's a type of synovial joint. The ball and socket are found in the shoulder and hip. The head of the bone rests in a depression, and they have the greatest range of motion. So you have the most there. Hinge joints allow along a singular plane, the elbow and knee, and between the phalanges of your fingers and toes. Uh, condylar joints allow for movement in two planes, the radius and the carpal bones, phalanges and the metacarpals, or metatarsal. So it allows movement in two planes. So we talked about before, uh, like the knee is movement in one plane, this allows two planes. Uh, saddle joints allow for a gliding all right, between the carpal and metacarpal base of the thumb. They glide. So you can see that little image right there showing them glide across. Okay, And then gliding or plane joints allow multi-directional movement within a singular plane. They move side to side. Pivot joints allow for rotations in a single plane. So you see right there, let's say a pivot joint with your head, you're going to be able to move it side to side, pivots. Right? And that ends the joints.